with the whole political campaign and the Donald Trump factor. I, I, I said it on Wednesday or Thursday, the world's upside down. The political world is upside down. And you have Donald Trump, who is sort of this mad hatter of American politics. But here's the catch. He may be mad, but he's driving everybody else in this process mad, too. And, or at least driving them wildly off their game in a way that feeds right in to his strengths. Um, take the Washington Post, Mark Halpern, the Washington Post. And I'm going to be talking now about people whom I love and respect. Papers that I love and respect. Journalists that I love and respect. But this is a diagnosis the mainstream media better pick up on fast because they're, they're getting it wrong time and time again. The Washington Post wrote an article yesterday morning where you could cut and paste, Mark, the GOP establishment names uh, and the quotes and the predictions of Donald Trump's imminent doom from the John McCain, the identical John McCain story that they wrote two, three weeks ago, two or three Sundays ago, identical. Really? They go to Lindsey Graham to predict that Donald Trump's campaign is going to end? GOP leaders say Trump erratic style will hurt him. I mean, I, I saw, we talked about this. Wall we could not believe the headline. Wall Street the Journal today, same idea, saying, all right, this is it. Trump's demise is finally coming. Yeah. They rely on a woman named Penny Nance, the chief executive of the conservative group Concern Women for America as their to expert say, to is say the, this yeah. is it, this is, shows you that Trump is about to decline. By the way, this is not even going to the substance of the remarks, which we'll get to in a second, but I mean, how, how many times are they going to predict the imminent decline of Donald Trump? There's an iron triangle now. You've got, you've got these conservative activists who want Trump to decline. You've got the 2016 candidates who want Trump to decline. And the media, as you say, some people we like and respect who just seem to have decided that they want to write his obituary now. We're not here carrying Donald Trump's brief. We're right. not here defending Donald Trump. But the media is jumping to conclusions that feed into Donald Trump's supporters' worst beliefs about the media, that assume the very worst and, and write it as if that's the case, and you only help Donald Trump. Okay, but, but that all said, and let's, uh, we can't resolve what was in Donald Trump's mind when he made that comment. And you about would agree, me. as a reporter for the New York Times, that the editor should not write it as the lead, that that is what Donald Trump is talking about, because you don't know, I don't know, they don't know what was in his head. We don't know, but here's my, but, but I think let's look at it this way. Do you think that sitting here today on Monday morning, three and a half days or whatever it is since yeah. that debate, do you think Donald Trump is in better shape than he was three and a half days ago or in worse shape than he was three and a half I days ago? I think he's probably after being on all the Sunday news shows and probably after you once again have the media overreacting and the Republican establishment in Washington overreacting and the Iron Triangle, That I think he's probably... Well, in as good of shape. Uh, I know this. It wasn't Donald Trump who was hurt by the debate. It was Jeb Bush who was hurt by the debate. It was Scott Walker who was hurt by the debate. It was the Republican establishment that was hurt by the debate. Look at the people who went up. Add up Donald Trump's numbers, Ben Carson's numbers, uh, and Ted Cruz's numbers. You're approaching 50% of three guys who are just anti-anti-Washington. Who was the biggest winner, Mika? Probably Carly Fiorina. She was. She was. And, um, you know, it's not just the media. I think there's a whole list here of entities that have taken not only just a side against Donald Trump, but aim at him. And they've completely misfired. And it's, it's not just the media. It's elite circles. It's um, you know, Fox News itself. It's the Republican Party, yeah, but, and but, they've but, all completely overreached. Well, and what they need to be looking at is not Donald Trump, but the mood of the country. Well, and, and by the way, let's just state, I think Donald Trump did a terrible job on the debate. 
Thursday night. Right. I think most of us did. I thought he bumbled through questions. He should right. have been better prepared. I thought it was a bad night for him. It is, though, the media overreacting to Donald Trump that once again feeds into Donald Trump. Who was it? I saw I, there was a quote that I think I sent to you. Mm -hmm. I think Mike, Matt Taibbi that said mm -hmm. only the Republican establishment and the mainstream media by overreaching could make, as Matt Taibbi said, one of the biggest bullies in America a sympathetic figure. And speaking of which, let's talk about my friends at Fox News. And I don't know Megyn Kelly that well, but I certainly, I, I just don't, I can't have any more respect uh, for, for the three and for Chris Wallace and I, I, I just love Brett Huge. and I've known him for a long time. I love him. He's a great guy. But let's talk about that for a second and the overreaction of that. that you know, Wrights Priebus had decided to ban networks, this one. And I would if I were Ryan Priebus too. So I'm not. not gonna, I would never give him SNBC a Republican debate right now. Uh, pretty soon I would. I uh, I would uh, things are point. things are changing really quickly. This network. But a year ago, never. I understand that. But the idea was to get news outlets, Mark, that would ask legitimate questions about policy instead of gotcha questions. There wasn't a single question asked of the Republican frontrunner. That dealt with jobs, that dealt with yeah. Iran, that dealt with ISIS, that dealt with the, the economy writ large, that dealt with, with foreign policy writ large. It was, you had three questions. The first one was, and I was stunned. The, and I guess you told me Rush Limbaugh talked about this for a, a, a long time. On, on, the first question was on Donald Trump's insult of Rosie O'Donnell and his insults of. Uh, uh, reality show contestants. And were they crude and crass? Yes. Would I ever say it? No. Would any Republican candidate ever say it? But no. But that's your first question. And then the next question was asking this billionaire about four deals that failed. And then I, the third was really it was a political speech that was veiled as a question with a zinger at the end going, so tell me, why did you, when did you become a Republican? I mean, it was, and so I'm sitting there thinking, I thought this is what Great we theater. as Republicans were trying to avoid. People that used front runners as theater. And it was political theater on, on Thursday night, starting with the first question. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the questions. They did ask him about the Iran deal at one point. Uh, that's the only, the only uh, foreign policy thing they asked him about. You know, a lot of people have criticized her, not just Rush Limbaugh, but for talking about the war on women. And for trying to take down the front runner, as you said, in something of a theatrical way, he didn't handle it well. Though he could have handled, no, handled it, it horribly. He could have handled it much better. There, there is somebody coming to his defense, though. Who's that? The North Korean government on their Twitter account. Do we have that, Alex? <laughs> the North Koreans are here. We go. U.S. media in total disarray as venomous Fox News declares war on noted no scholar. scholar. Donald Trump. So there you go. No, no. <laughs> got the North Koreans. That's a pretty strong coalition. You know, uh, they went after him, and he didn't do all that well. But you, I think we all, at least you and I, agree. Mika probably agrees. I don't know about Steve, but he's still standing, and he's still being defiant. And if he's so weak, the question I have this morning is, why isn't any Republican just overtaking him? If there's, if it's such a strong field, if he's so weak, why is it that that they can't get? you know, attraction in the polls. I, Why I, can't they move up? I, I, I just, I, following the tw my Twitter feed yesterday, throughout the day, when there was a poll showing Donald Trump in first place comfort. Just fraught with lots of different problems uh, all around for him and for the whole other things that might have been disturbing if there are any. We're so busy trying to play gotcha like liberals usually do with conservatives. Moderators asked were questions that if asked by a broadcast network, coalition with Turkey at the same time that Equal we're trying pay, to go in, you could go into specifics of policy and get him there. Instead, this was the sort of thing. And the questions that the moderators asked were questions that if asked by a broadcast network, or any other network other than Fox News, the reaction would have been so volcanic. Think if it happened here. That conservatives would altogether be trashing those networks and the mainstream media 
for months to come, which brings up the much bigger point. Then we'll go to this poll. The whole idea people are out there cheering, well, is Fox News going to win this or Donald Trump going to win this? No, this is, this is not a zero-sum game. Fox News wins when it's Fox News and the conservative movement against the world, against liberal bias, against media bias. You now have 25% of the Republican Party. You now have the GOP frontrunner at war with Fox News. Now, I think that's not smart for the Republican frontrunner. I would never do it. <laughs> he'll make, a, he'll make up with them. In a million years. But that's, well, what, I'm, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. They're going to make yeah. up, and the reason they're going to make up is because at the end of the day, it's about business. Roger L. said that when he attacked MSNBC one of many times. He goes, hey, it's not even about ideology. It's about what's good television and what's bad television. Donald Trump brought in 24 is million people to watch this debate. Roger Ailes and Fox News knows that. It's also not good having Megyn Kelly out front, who is their new superstar. She is the superstar over there, and it gets amazing numbers. She is, she is just a, she's a talent who's extraordinarily important to them. She doesn't need to be at war with the front runner. And, and playing victim, and she's not playing victim. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, she should play victim. And she, but no, that's not good for Fox. It's not good to have the conservative base split. Yeah. It's not good for the Republican Party. And that's one other thing that my son said last night over dinner. He said, he said they're, they're just dividing the party. And they're just inviting Donald Trump to run as an independent. Somebody out there has to have the sense to try to bring everybody together. And the demographics of the Fox News viewership is pretty in line with what Trump is talking about on policy. Yeah. All right, despite all the controversy and headlines, a new poll finds Donald Trump is still on top with Republican voters. An NBC News survey monkey poll from Friday and Saturday shows Trump with 23%, 10 points ahead of Senator Ted Cruz, Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, and Senator Marco Rubio round out the top five. Mark Alpern, who's missing from that top five? Uh, the national front runner, the yeah. dominant inevitable nominee, Jeb. Bush, Bush. That's, well, and all, you know. that's just stunning to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, 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 and by the way, yeah, Scott Walker, the other national front runner. The two people that are the national front runners, they look like establishment candidates. Look again at the top, actually four. Look at the top four people in the Republican Party. This is a headline: not Donald Trump, not comments on Friday night on CNN. The top four, that is your national three, headline. Three of whom have never held elective office. And the fourth has been running against the Republican Party from the second he started running for the Senate.